Get that folks. Well it's that time of the year again when I can burn stuff and blow it up. So I've got a brand new condensing unit here that's been dropped. It's got no refrigerant in it. I've checked all the valves and everything and there's no refrigerant in it. So something's slightly cracked. Uh, what I'm going to do is just hook up power to it, leave the discharge valve closed and just see how long it runs until something goes pop or starts burning. Just like some of my previous videos a while ago. Uh, there's a couple of other units out there which are also low on refrigerant, so we might try a few other different tricks. So for now I'm just going to get set up and get the gauges on it. I've got a high pressure several thousand psi discharge gauge to attach to that with a cap tube. Uh, I'm going to use a ammeter and probably a temperature sensor if I can find my digital thermometer. At the ammeter I'm going to set up I'll use a longer wire. I hope it works just as well over a long lead. And there are some capillary tubes around here somewhere. Yeah, like that. Yeah, I just realised the back plug of the uh, big gauge was leaking, it wasn't properly inserted. And that uh, fluid is actually glycerine. It's uh, water soluble, harmless. Some of them have a silicon oil which is really slippery and sticky and very hard to wash off but thankfully this is glycerine. So I can reseal the plug and refill it with glycerine. There we go. All set for annihilation. That's a uh, temperature sensor. And straight down into the compressor. It's wrapped around with thermal material under the thermal blanket. It mains power and feedback to the amp meter. I don't expect to see much on it because the amp amp meter's minimum current is 20 amps and this thing only pulls about 8. But just in case something exciting happens, I'll see it. Uh, that bottom one's the temp gauge. Let's see what amps. High pressure. Ooh, I got mail. <laughs> that one there is from the old test when I did a Fujitsu or something else. It's damaged gauge. It'll max out and that's it. It's just on there to plug the hole up. And that one there is full pressure. That goes 1,000, 2,000 up to 5,000 psi. I don't expect it to get up to 1,000, but it'll still give me a rough idea of how high we're going. So, let the carnage begin. Power on. Rising. 
definitely on 700 PSI. I wonder if the reversing valve is having something to do with this. And it might be dumping pressure back to the low side when it peaks out. Pressure's still rising though, we're going up to 750 psi. Compressor temperatures rising, we're about 45 degrees. Leakage short. Compressor winding shorted out to earth. She burnt herself. Oh well. Well that was interesting. I think that condensing unit saw the face of death. The compressor went dead short to earth and tripped the earth leakage breaker on the main panel. That's why the lights went out. And the garage is slowly filling with that sense of death. That funny smell that I've smelt before when I've blown these things up. A corrosive, burnt compressor smell. It's rather unpleasant. Unfortunately it's still holding nearly 800 psi, so I can't just pick it up and carry it outside. Oh, I'll just turn the fans on and let it bleed out. I can hear it leaking. It's gradually leaking. <laughs> That's a pop cap tube out. Core temperature of the compressor is going to be a lot higher than that. That's only because the probe's just wrapped on the outside of a bit of thermal material. Which is, uh, gotten a bit hot. <laughs>